Yes. What do you see? Thank you. Port to starboard! Port to starboard! Port is left, starboard is right. When Titanic's crew spotted the iceberg, the order was hard as starboard, even though the iceberg was seen to be on the starboard side. On the surface to us, it may sound like the order was to turn right, which would be to turn into the iceberg. We see this in films about the Titanic as well. This is not an historical inaccuracy on the part of the films, nor is it a mistake that Titanic's real-life crew made, as some authors recently have been trying to claim. No, it's actually called Tiller Commands, or Helm Commands, and it is the exact opposite of what us landlubbers may assume it means. I'll give a brief definition of tiller commands for those of you who are tuning in just for a quick answer, but then I'll go back and give a detail of the history of tiller commands for those of you who are interested. Take this model sailboat, as it'll illustrate tiller commands perfectly. In the olden days, ships were steered by tillers instead of wheels. The tiller is a horizontal post connected to the rudder. In this model, it's this metal rod. If I turn the tiller to be against the starboard side, or hard to starboard, it has pushed the rudder in such a way to cause the ship to turn to port. Putting it against the port side, it'll turn the ship to starboard. The controls are mirrored. Titanic was not controlled with a tiller, but the tradition of using these tiller commands was still the norm worldwide in 1912. On day five of the U.S. senatorial inquiries into the sinking of the Titanic, Quartermaster Hitchens, the man who was at Titanic's helm at the time of the collision, described what the orders were leading up to the impact. Quote, I heard the telegraph bell ring. Also, the officer gave the order hard to starboard, with the sixth officer standing by me to see the duty carried. Repeated the order, hard to starboard. Hard to starboard. Adding the word hard to the order, as you may assume, is used to add urgency. Or to quote the book Seamanship in the Age of Sail by author John Harlan, it means to increase the helm already on, or to make the quickest possible swing. Now let's take a full astern and go all the way back to the beginning, and learn the history of tiller commands and why the tradition of using them carried even into the age of the wheel helm. Steering with poles dates back to ancient Egypt, but it was the Vikings who standardized using a steering pole on the right side of their longboats. This was their steerboard, so the right side of the ship eventually came known as starboard. Now because this board jutted out onto the right side of the ship a lot, they had to come up alongside the piers or the quay side with that on the left, hence port. The use of poles and boards eventually gave way to the more efficient rudder, but this was still controlled by a pole on deck known as the tiller. Push the tiller to the port side, the ship goes to starboard. Push the tiller to the starboard side, the ship goes to port. We covered this already, but this is how the early seafarers learned to navigate. The settlers coming across the Atlantic, their ships used tillers. The greats of the golden age of sail used tillers, or even the more rudimentary poles in the water. It wasn't until around 1703 that wheels started to be used on ships, starting in the British Royal Navy. On sailing ships, these wheels usually connected to a block and tackle system below that controlled your standard tiller. However, the pulleys now meant that the wheel direction could turn in the right direction that you wanted to turn, and therefore turning to starboard would start to bring you to starboard. Although that all depends on how the pulleys are strung, and depending on the ship builder, they might have been strung differently. So some ships turning the wheel this way is going to bring you that way, some ships is going to bring you that way. This obviously led to an inconsistency, so they stuck to the traditional tiller commands. A helmsman was familiar with what was on his ship and how his ship would respond to steering, so he knew how to turn that helm when the skipper or the officer gave the order 
to turn in a direction. It was on the steamship Great Eastern that the first machine-aided steering came into play, and the pulley system was eventually dropped altogether on steamships. However, the tiller or helm command system remained in place all the way until the 1930s when it was finally replaced with the far more logical system of, if you want to turn that way, you say turn that way. Mariners are usually set in their ways, especially the old salts of the early days when ships were still controlled by tillers or other poles. But imagine the chaos if a skipper was a lifelong user of tiller commands, but his new helmsman, fresh out of training, was only versed in the more direct system of orders. That's why the tradition of tiller commands carried on for so long. In 1912, when the Titanic sank, tiller commands were still the official practice of Great Britain, the United States, and the rest of the world. When Officer Murdoch ran onto the bridge and shouted hard a starboard, Quartermaster Hitchens was correct in turning the ship to port. Now interestingly, another incident in history comes to mind when tiller commands were used. The lookouts of the White Star Liner SS Atlantic in 1873 spotted rocks and breakers on their starboard side, and her officer on watch, Officer Metcalf, ordered hard starboard. This actually threw modern historians through a loop for a while. The assumption was that because Officer Metcalf ordered hard starboard and he saw the breakers on the starboard side, well, he must have assumed the mainland was off to the port because the historians were not actually familiar with tiller commands. I was actually able to correct this and say, no, this was Officer Metcalf using tiller commands, which was standard practice at the time, especially with the White Star Line. This isn't to toot my own horn or anything. I only knew about tiller commands because of my experience with the Titanic. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. Tiller commands were the standard practice throughout all of maritime history, from the advent of steering up to 1933 in the United Kingdom and 1935 in the United States. So all the way up through the First World War, but terminating just before the Second World War. In 1912, when the Titanic sank, tiller commands were the standard practice, and that is why the officers shouted hard to starboard and the ship turned to port.